You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. To explore our complete lineup, head over to phoenixmedia.us or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Phoenix Media Radio. In Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Simon Marks. Buckingham Palace says it's launching an investigation into claims that the Duchess of Sussex bullied staff when she was a fully active member of the royal family. Human resources staff at the palace will lead the probe, and former employees of the royal household will be given a chance to participate. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in California are dismissing the claims as a calculated smear campaign ahead of the transmission this weekend of the TV interview they've pre-recorded with Oprah Winfrey. Also in the UK today, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, unveiled his budget and promised to do whatever it takes to rebuild the British economy. I know the British people don't like tax rises, nor do I. But I also know they dislike dishonesty even more. Taxes for large companies will rise in 2023 and from next year, personal tax thresholds in the UK are to be frozen. FSN's Oli Barrett is in London. He is in really unprecedented times in terms of the challenge that this government has faced because of the pandemic and also the unprecedented levels of public spending they've had to put in place to deal with it. President Biden is slamming a decision by the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, to lift all COVID-19 restrictions in the state, including a mandate ordering the wearing of face masks. The governor says businesses can return to 100 percent normal operations, though many leading companies operating in Texas say they plan to keep restrictions in place. At the White House, President Biden expressed consternation over the governor's move. We are on the cusp of being able to fundamentally change the nature of this disease because of the way in which we're able to get vaccines in people's arms. The last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. It still matters. New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, says he's not resigning after a third woman came forward to accuse him of inappropriate behavior. Speaking at a news conference in Albany, he seemed to be on the verge of tears as he offered an apology for his behavior. I acted in a way that made people feel uncomfortable. It was unintentional. And I truly and deeply apologize for it. I feel awful about it, and frankly, I am embarrassed by it. The United Nations says 38 people were killed in Myanmar on Wednesday, the deadliest day since a military coup sparked widespread protests. The deaths took place at demonstrations across the country. Calls are growing for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and a return to democracy. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first. Name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the end, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. Two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The stores are bringing me a baby brother. We can do this together. All right, let's 
let's go. Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. No. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following is a production of Phoenix Media. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the company or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smiling heart. It's about town, Deb. And welcome. Oh, and welcome to this week's episode of City Talk. And I'm about town, Deb, your host. We have a new setup here, so excuse me if there's a, fl- a few glitches. I'm excited to have Kim Surratt back. It's been way too long. She's not only our co-host and maybe pretty much the main host today, she is also one of our sponsors with Surratt Law Practice. We also wanna thank Kirk Allure with Gratis Gives Processing as a sponsor as well. And we're gonna have Don Butterfield, the COO of Reno Behavioral Healthcare Hospital, who is, you can see him, but I think he might, are you in your car? I don't know. I guess you go anywhere you got to be when you want to make things happen. So we're happy to have Don with us as well. And on in well around 4:30, so hang tight. We are going to have Emma White, and she's is the founder of Life is Worth Living. And since today is be this is be happy. We want we want you to be happy day. And you know what? Sometimes we're all like not as perky as we want to be, and we can't all be happy every day. But today is a day. We want to celebrate our community and we want to we're happy to have Don on set as well as Emma, because um, Don is doing great things with his team at um, Reno Behavioral Center. So I uh, oh, and we also want to give a shout out to Christian behind the scenes, phoenixmedia.us and also the theme song, um, D.D. James. We want to thank him for that. So, Kim, where have you been? What the heck? I'm at the legislature. It's that time of year, that time of season for me. But although when I say I'm at the legislature, you know that's by Zoom, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's different. Totally. My life's a little different this year with lobbying. So. Unique. Well, it's got to be, it's got to be, I can't even imagine what it's like with you guys all Zooming in. But you're, but you're still able to make a difference. <laughs> well, we're still making a difference. We're still making things happen. But you know, it, it's just this continuous, nonstop technical issues thing where somebody can't hear and somebody got cut off and some legislators trying to get in and uh, the witnesses aren't there to testify. And they're not really witnesses at legislature. That was a lawyer move. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's, it's chaos. And hopefully it's over soon, right? Well, I, I hope so. So I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, wait, you got it? You got your first? Yeah, and your second? Yeah, every choice lawyers, you know, I, there's a lot of people who would disagree with that, but they want us back in court. And they want us okay, but, like the legislature. But have you had both? I had one. So my second oh. one would be March 15th. Okay, because I had I, business, nothing was great. Yeah. 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 We, I had mine with, with Miss Jazzy Georgia, and we get this. And I know Don, um, if he's listening, I know he's had both of his. But we got our second one March 9th, March 9th. So the first one was easy peasy. I didn't probably even, it was amazing. So I'm hoping the second one's going to be just as amazing. Um, but I know that this topic is, you know, I know it's the, the happy part of it is we want people to be happy day. But, um, you know, I know it doesn't always work that way. Well, so it has a springboard to talk about the other side, which is yeah, we're not happy, right? Yeah, so we're gonna go into that. Don, can you hear us? Can Don hear us? I don't know if he could hear us. 
So in the meantime, though, Kim, is there some with being in the legislature working? Is there something that you're working on right now that that you would like to share about until we can get Don back or if he's there? Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot. You know, I always monitor all the family law stuff that's going on at the legislature and president of the Nevada Justice Association. So we've got proactive bills for that. But uh, my own personal bill, I have an adoption bill that's okay. Uh, that's got several changes in it, but one of the main things is to make it where we can have more than two parents adopt. So if we have step parents, we can add them in as parents through the adoption process instead of leaving them off. Well, that's nice. That's important. Okay, so hopefully um, we're still waiting on. There we go. Welcome, Don. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to Don. Come on. Can we hear you? Say something, Mr. Don. No. I heard him for a moment. I saw his lips moving. His lips are moving. Um, this, is, this is what it's like at the legislature. This is, is it like that too? Like I know, <laughs> but you know what? We um, we have two minutes before we go to break, so I know by the time we get back, we'll have unless I can hear him now. Can't hear him yet. We will keep working on that. But when we do come back, um, I I'm going to hand over the 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 wheel to you. Because you you did say you are working. There's some other important issues that they're working on in the legislature that does affect affect the mental health. So we're gonna come back and chat about that with Don. And, and I know that their hospital is doing a lot to make a difference. And you personally love them, so I'm I excited. Them. I love this topic, and you know, it's in the year of COVID. We need mental health awareness more than ever. So. I totally, I totally agree. So I think with that said, we're going to go out for break and that'll give us a little bit more time when we come back. And when we do come back, I'm going to bring us in, Kim, but then I want you to get right to Dawn and then hopefully we'll be able to hear him by then. That's what happens. As you said, this yeah, is all part you know, of. You can just have Dawn's face on there. I can fill in the words. I, okay. I <laughs> you can read, you can read lips. Well, oh, hopefully. I, I think he signed out. Is going to sign back in, so hopefully it'll work. But we want to. We want you to chime in if you have any questions. We want you to like um, our Facebook pages. We're here to inform and to help you. So we're going to take a quick break. It's about Tun Deb with Kim Surratt. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in the backyard, and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores, okay, and at so 09, it was me, your backyard firebird, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me. But I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow, right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved one and you'd make a plan. It's true. You can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. If this month, and then she'll bring Don into America and the ad That'll be $73.11. Do you have a charity that I can donate it up to? You just did. But I didn't select any option. It happened just by using your credit card. We recently changed our payment processing to Gratis Gives, who not only saves our company a ton of money on processing fees, but also donates a portion of every purchase to a participating local nonprofit. Why doesn't every business do that? 
if they switch to Gratis Gives like we did, they can. Achieve real social change by contacting Gratis Gives at 855-464-7284 or online at gratisgives.com. Now more than ever, family matters, and Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting lawyersforfamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. She's out on the road and all over the web with a big smile and heart. It's about town, Deb. My town, your town, or any town. This is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the second segment of City Talk. Do we have Don with us? Oh, he's checking the camera. <laughs> oh, he's going to try it again. So you know what, Kim? Right. We're going to go. I'm, we're going to go right to you, and I'm just going to let you take us into this very important topic. No problem. It, so as we were talking about, it is you know want to make you happy day, but we we want to talk about those that are struggling to be happy. So we're talking about suicide prevention, and I know it's heavy. And Debbie always you say I get the heavy topics, <laughs> and I do because. The way I look at the world is the heavy topics are what we need to help people with so we can bring them up to the Debbie McCarthy way of being <laughs> happy, right? And cheery and bouncy. And there's so many people that are struggling. This has been a really difficult year for a lot of people. And it's been on the news. Just yesterday, there was a huge news program on suicide and teenage uh, teenage suicide over the past year with COVID. And I know Don had some stats for us saying that just Reno Behavioral Healthcare Hospital saw a 50% increase in youth seeking inpatient mental health treatment in 2020 compared to 2019. That's an astronomical number. And you know, this this topic is really, really, it's a sensitive topic for me because in 2014, I lost my best friend to suicide. And at that time, I struggled to take her around town to get services, to get help. And at that time, we did not have Reno Behavioral Healthcare Hospital available to us. They're a newer hospital in Reno. And they really, I mean, immediately, unfortunately, were up to capacity and full because of that's how badly we needed the services in Reno. And, you know, she wasn't a youth. But when you struggle as an adult, uh, you know, adults have fully formed frontal lobes and we're mature, right? Um, in theory, we should be able to handle our problems, if, you know, better than the average child. Children don't have that. And so uh, the past year, it's been, it's been crazy. It's been frustrating. It's been sad for a lot of people. And I don't think we quite know the damages. Somebody was saying, on the news yesterday, they were talking about what what will this generation see 10 years down the road? What will it look like? And I can tell you, I've got, as Debbie knows, I've got a 10-year-old or 12-year-old. My goodness, he's 12 now. I was thinking about two, a couple of years ago when he dealt with the, the suicide stuff. But, you know, he, he's happy. He's a good kid, right, Debbie? Oh, he is. He's amazing. Yeah. He's super mature. He's a great kid. And, you know, but with COVID, he's been at school so little and he started middle school this year and, you know, starting in a brand new school, a brand new school that combined a bunch of schools. He knew nobody. He didn't know any of the kids whatsoever. And if you're not at school, how you can't meet children. And we live in Washington Valley. So we're in a rural area with very little access. But, you know, there aren't kids playing on our street. We're not that kind of a subdivision, you know, there aren't a lot of kids around. And he has, it's been hard, Debbie. I mean, it's been so difficult and he has struggled so much. I don't think he's at the level of talking about suicide or any of those kind of concerns, but his mental health is first and foremost for us because if you can't meet friends and you don't have friends to play with, I mean, that's... Yeah. 
a child's world, right? Don, do we have you? <laughs> we still have Don's face. I can hear you. Can you hear? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, I think we just heard him. Can you I can say hear that you. Again? I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you now. Yes. Everybody can hear Hi, we are All so right. happy you're here, Don. Right. This um as we, you know, we just appreciate you and your team and your staff and everything you guys are doing every day, especially for the youth, not just the adults. So thank you, Don. And I'm gonna let Kim take it back. I know she was getting emotional and I'm, we're just grateful, Kim, for sharing with us. So I'll let you take it back and then you can bring it into Don. So Don, we were just talking about my son struggling this year, having no friends because he's at a brand new school when he's at school, which has been ex very, very little that he's been there. And I gave your first statistic about a 50% increase in youth seeking inpatient mental health from 2019 to 2020 already. And, but can you introduce us a little bit to your hospital? I was just saying, I didn't have, when my friend committed suicide in 2014, we didn't have your hospital as an option. And I've toured your hospital and I think it's amazing. But if you could give us a little more about renal behavioral health care. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so yeah, so we are um, relatively new to this community. We just opened our doors in 2018 and specialize in mental health and addiction treatment for patients of all ages on both an inpatient and outpatient basis. So Don, I, I, like I said, I gave that 50% increase. That's dramatic. I, would, I mean, I know you're still growing and you're newer to the community. So is it is it COVID or is it that you're new and just increasing your patients? Well, it's probably a little bit of our actual growth since we are no doubt that COVID has had a dramatic impact on uh, families, um, adults, but in particular, uh, kids, especially um, uh, without all the resources located and, and located within their school. Um, we know that um, it's really hit youth hard. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's my experience with my son. It's just been absolutely devastating as a parent to watch because I also don't know how to fix it because I can't get him out of the social isolation, right? Without, I mean, mental health care is really the key here and it's, it's important because um, I can't just create friends or create the school contact that he would normally have. So tell me, tell me more about what services, right. yeah. what is that you have? Well, the first thing that we offer and that we encourage anybody who thinks that they um, might have a child who is struggling, um, we offer free and confidential assessments 24-7. And um, we have a call and we can provide a test and we can determine the best course of care and even the best course of care will always refer somebody to a community that might specialize in what they need. So we kind of serve as a as triage line in that regard. Um, so what, um, what but beyond that, we offer inpatient. Uh, oh, go right ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, so for parents listening and are concerned, you know, you said it's 24 hour, right? I, I, I think the majority of the public just doesn't know what it's like to walk into your hospital and seek that help. You say it's confidential. You know, tell us a little more about the process. Yeah. Well, a lot of people have never seen what a, a modern behavior health hospital looks like. And unfortunately, there's a lot of associated mental health. Um, with that in mind, our facility was designed um, to be very therapeutic. Um, we didn't want it to feel institutional um, for the family we've been very who we've brought on board our, our team uh, but we want it we want to raise the standard of care that's available in the, uh, so in terms of the services that we provide so, so can provide uh, the, the full the array test. for you and it's not and unfortunately that's what people <laughs> think of when they think of hospitals. Uh, 
um, uh, behavior health has come a long way uh, at that time. And facility, and we're proud of the staff and the, and the caliber of the service that we provide. So, um, John, tell me about the Jason Foundation. What is that? Well, um, so we, the Jason Foundation is a national nonprofit and lies in suicide prevention. And we are the Northern Nevada affiliate for the Jason Foundation. And they have a number of resources online um, for parents, as teachers, and even for um, youth and students um, on how to help address what they call the silent epidemic. And that is um, suicide. And so um, with that, uh, you can get more information at the Jason Foundation dot com. Awesome. I know I know like Washoe County School District has been sending out a lot more information for parents also with resources and information on suicide prevention to help these families. Um, now, I want to go back to use of your hospital, though, because I'll tell people, you know, he's right. It's not, it's a therapeutic setting with plants and warm paint colors and, and the things you want, it's not white walls and padded, white padded walls, right? It's not that. And so if, um, right. if a parent is concerned about their, their child, how do they get a hold of renal behavioral health in order to get help? Um, they should start by calling and um, that number is seven five three nine three two two zero and then if anybody is interested in more information about our hospital they can find us online at reno behavioral great and uh for and for those of us that don't know where your hospital is even located where is it in reno so we're at reno um south virginia and Hillbull. Um, there is a, a target there and uh, that most people are aware of, and we're located right behind. We're at 6940 Sierra Center Parkway. I always say you're down the road from NB Energy, too, because a lot of people too. know where that is, right? All right. So, Debbie, I think we're ready for another break. Right. And we'll I think we'll probably have Emma with us, hopefully. Yes, when we come back, we will have Emma. So, Don, you're welcome to stay because I think you know Emma, and it might be nice to have a friendly face on here for her as well, if you have time. Okie doke. That sounds good. Me too. Okay, we'll be right back. Stay tuned for City Talk. <laughs> People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. Don't tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the internet's most beloved pets. And they all have one thing in common. Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog and cat. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard, that's optional. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ed Council. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no. That's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison? Why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit stoptextstoprex.org, brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. 
Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. That'll be $73.11. Do you have a charity that I can donate it up to? You just did. But I didn't select any option. It happened just by using your credit card. We recently changed our payment processing to Gratis Gives, who not only saves our company a ton of money on processing fees, but also donates a portion of every purchase to a participating local nonprofit. Why doesn't every business do that? If they switch to Gratis Gives like we did, they can. Achieve real social change by contacting Gratis Gives at 855-464-7284 or online at gratisgives.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Listen live at phoenixmedia.us. You know that's what she said. Come on, let's have some fun with the About Town Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now back to the show. And welcome back to City Talk. I'm About Town Deb, your host, and Kim Surratt in the blue, my co-host. Happy to have her back. She's been busy, 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 busy with the legislation. Did I say that? Legislation. The legislature. Legislature. (laughs) She's been really busy, but this is a very important topic for Kim. And no matter how many hours she's been working, she is here, and I appreciate her for that. And Don, we are grateful to have Don Butterfield with us as well the COO of um, Reno Behavioral Hospital. He also knows Emma. And we want to welcome in Emma White. Emma, the founder of Worth Life is Worth Living. You also are an author. You've gone through a lot. And you are here to let other youth know and other people know that, that life is worth living. And it's OK. So um, we're so grateful that you're taking the time. We know you're crazy busy. But this is important to you as well. So, Kim, I'm going to send it back over to you, and I'm going to let you continue on with the interviews. Absolutely. Hi, Emma. Hi. We're, we're super excited to have you. Now, real quick, just tell us tell us about Life is Worth Living. So, um, the website is called lifeisworthit.org, and um, essentially it is everything that I wanted um, as a teen struggling with suicidal depression. Um, you know, it was difficult to find resources or to, to know what the answers were to my questions or to find anybody to relate to. So, now that I've come out the other side of that, I have created lifeisworthit.org um, that also has my self-help book for teen struggling just to find, you know, resources and answers to questions that they might have um, and and really just help people and help teens. Now, Emma, your website's good for parents too, right? Give them the assistance they need for their teens? Yes, absolutely. And there's plenty of videos and readings um, for parents as well to kind of get in the mind of a teen. And and they probably know their teen pretty well, but sometimes, you know, uh, teens are good at hiding their emotions or hiding things that they're going through. So um, there's some warning signs to look out for and um, definitely helpful for parents too. So give us a little bit of that because I'm a parent of a 12-year-old. You weren't on when we were talking about his struggles over the past year with covid he started middle school, uh, brand new school, didn't know anybody, and has really struggled with not having friends and difficulties. But, you know, what's your advice? What are some of those warning signs? Because, you know, we look at this program as being something for, we, we want to get the help out there. We want them to go to your website for the detailed info, but help us get some context to it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're looking at COVID, which has really impacted many teens, um, maybe more so than it would have in the past. But it's important to note that even before the pandemic, we still saw these huge increases in numbers in teen suicide and teen depression. And a lot of that can be related to social media and pressures that teens feel, whether it's through TV or celebrities or influencers, um, social media 
platforms are really influencing our teens to feel like they aren't enough, to feel like they don't have confidence, comparing themselves. And then obviously you throw in a pandemic and you have kids that aren't able to see their friends or maybe even make new friends like your son. So I think the biggest thing I would say is to remind the teens that this is just a page in your life. It's not the full book. It's not even the full chapter, but it can be difficult, especially when you're struggling to meet people during a pandemic. So I would say some of the warning signs, you know, we do have to be careful because teens do, you know, they have emotions that fluctuate, they go back and forth. Teens are moody. I was definitely a moody teenager. Um, I wouldn't say that automatically pointed to suicide or depression, but I would definitely say that the warning signs would be um, withdrawing from family activities or friends, or I know we haven't had a lot of sports, um, saying things like they don't care anymore what happens to them or withdrawing from their friends. So definitely those are some some warning signs. Um, but as a parent, it is hard to know. Um, so opening that dialogue. Really and well, you know, I'm going to jump in. But just yeah. It's super hard. It, and I'll tell you, as a parent, I've really struggled with this whole thinking, well, the pandemic will be over at any point now, right? So like in March, we were thinking May, June, you know, and I just kept thinking, well, once it goes away, you know, at some point, <laughs> right. But then you, you know, parents second guess themselves. They sit around going, well, you know, I, I think they're okay, but there can be some serious damage to just to not taking some of this serious. Right. And, and I think, you know, I'm not a parent, but I obviously have a lot of experience talking with parents who have either had a child um, that has committed suicide or attempted. And I think a lot of parents are afraid to maybe ask those questions. I don't know if maybe they're afraid um, to hurt their kids' feelings, but asking those questions is, is really going to provide the insight that you need. And maybe it's not suicide in general, but maybe it's saying, hey, Instead of, you know, giving me the glazed over, I'm fine, I'm okay, let's really talk about what's going on in your life and, and what do you need help with or what do you need advice on um, and, and establishing that relationship um, where your teens feel comfortable going and talking to you, um, not as a parent, but maybe as, as a friend or a counselor. It's so hard to get teenagers to talk. <laughs> they, they really are a struggle, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's... Um, yeah, you, know, you sit around, and I, I talk to parents all the time because, you know, I do family law, so we're talking to them about divorce and, and about talking to their kids about that topic, which, of course, leads to additional mental health issues and concerns, but, you know, trying to get a teenager to talk is sometimes <laughs> it's pulling teeth, <laughs> right? Most so, definitely. What, so tell me more, what resources do you recommend? What should parents go to if, if they have concerns? Well, we have a lot of great resources in Reno. Obviously, Reno Behavioral Health is a great one. And I know that they not only have programs, but they have small groups or um, counseling sessions that you can go. Obviously, Don talked about that a little bit before. Um, we have some other great resources in Reno, as well as some national resources that break down based on states. So on lifeisworthit.org, you'll find a list of national resources. If you go onto those lists, you can actually put in your zip code, and it will bring up a bunch of lists of what you can find in your area. We've got Children's Cabinet, which is really awesome, and they have a lot of programs and self-help um, stuff for parents and teens. You know, a lot of our hospitals do great work. So I would I would suggest going on there. Um, NAMI is another one um, that provides a lot of help. So we do have a lot of resources. It's just about knowing where they are and, and what they offer. Now, you, you have a personal story that brought you down this road, right? The, yes. What do you tell people about that? I'm very open about it. Um, I struggled when I was 15. I developed depression and anxiety um, due to bullying at school, and I, I just didn't really know how to handle it. I had never dealt with um, not only in-person bullying, but dealing with social media, which was so different and so new when I was going through high school. I don't, I don't think anybody intended for it to have the negative consequences that it has. Um, and so just feeling that pressure of imperfection and feeling uncomfortable going and talking to my parents, maybe feeling like I would be disappointing them or, you know, maybe they had too much to worry about. Um, and so in, in the four month span of kind of suppressing my emotions and what I was going through, I developed depression. Um, and 
thankfully, um, my suicide attempt did not work, and I'm here, and I'm so thankful and grateful for that. But I'm not alone. Um, there are so many teens that think about it or attempt it, um, specifically because we just don't really know what to do. We talk about physical illness all the time. And I think if anybody gets, you know, strep throat or sore throat, they automatically know where to go or what to do. It's not the same with our mental health and we're working really hard to, to change that. We are, I, you know, we were talking earlier in the show or Debbie and I were talking about what was going on at the legislature and, and Don, I'm sure you're pleased. I mean, there's been a lot of mental health bills. I don't know that they're the be all end all solution yet for Nevada, but Hopefully, hopefully people are starting to be focused on it. Because unfortunately, I think things like our school shootings is what causes people to finally yes. think about it. Don? Yeah, it seems like more people are starting to speak up and more people are starting to ask for mental health, which, which is exactly what we need. Also wanted to say hi, Emma. Hi, Don. I had the Emma speak about a year and a half ago. Um, it's a very powerful story. And so um, I, it's great to see what you're doing, Emma. It's, it's wonderful work and much needed. Thank you so much. Same to you. It's, it's a relief for me to know that somebody's really kind of focusing on teenagers and really thinking about the teen perspective of it. I think a lot of resources in our entire world on every subject is always focused on from a, an adult perspective, right? And not necessarily from a child's perspective or teens. Teens like to be called teens, not children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things I'm learning as a parent of a 12 year old, I know I need to use certain vocabulary and behave a certain way as a mother, right? <laughs> so, um, so tell me, you know, like that speech that Don was just talking about, is there somewhere we, we can watch that and see it? Um, I don't believe that there was a video at that, but um, I have been fortunate enough to um, have been in a lot of virtual events over the last year. We can thank the pandemic for pushing us to virtual. So if you go to lifeisworthit.org slash events, you will find some videos of um, some speeches and events that I've uh, been a part of. And I did want to um, leave you guys with just an exciting announcement um, that on the 14th, I will be hosting my first ever in-person teen confidence workshop. Yeah. It's So it's really exciting. Um, we're going to talk about all the things that teens struggle with, how they can find their purpose and self-love. So that things like suicide don't seem so much of an option. So I'm really excited about that. You'll find that on the website as well if you have a teen that you would like to enroll. In. Wonderful. Thank you, Debbie. We're ready Thanks, for uh, another break already. We're ready for we are ready for another break. Now, uh, Emma, if you'd like to stay around and chat a little bit more, you're more than welcome to. We'd love to have you. Don, the same for you as well. We're gonna take our final break and um stay tuned. It's about town Deb, City Talk, Kim Surratt. <laughs> Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Now more than ever, family matters. And Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting lawyersforfamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first. Name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole, or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. Switching laces, just put the end, cross them over, switch the loop. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Okay. Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. 
Two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 men 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. This message is for all of you sitting in the passenger seat. And apologies if it gets a little uncomfortable, but how does it feel to be at the mercy of someone who thinks a random text is more important than your life? Someone who takes their eyes off the road while speeding along in a three-ton hunk of steel. Freaky, right? Well, why not just ask them to stop? Or better yet, volunteer to text for them. It might be a little awkward, but believe me, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. (laughs) Apparently, they have no comment. Dads? Let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. Look for FAST, F, face drooping, A, arm weakness, S, speech difficulty, T, time to call 911 immediately. Know the sudden signs. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. Ready to help from her toes to her head. Just give her a shout. Call About Town Deb. My town, your town, or any town, this is About Town Deb presents City Talk. Now back to the show. And welcome back to the final segment. It goes so fast of City Talk. Um, I am your host, Debbie McCarthy, Kim Surratt, co-host. Thank you again, Kim. I love that I, and at the beginning of the show, Kim said this, I, anytime we, I love the perky, happy stuff. Yes, I do. I struggle with the serious topics. I do. I just, I struggle with them. And that's why I love having Kim to be able to come on um, because it's important. And I know, I wish, I, I mean, I wish I was better at it, but we know we all have our expertise. So I feel like if you surround yourself with people who can help you lift everybody else up, why not? So I'm grateful for Kim and Emma. I've heard so much about you and I'm so excited that you're here. Um, and Don, um, I don't know what we would do without you. You're, you're, you are always, always, always here for us. So before we go back, I just wanted to make sure that you all, all of you knew how much I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and, and Emma, we, we, we did mention you also have a book. So I want to make sure that you can get that out. But you had written something that I looked up. And I, I love this phrase. It's not okay, but it will be. I think that's really profound and it's very heartwarming and touching and it's so true. And I just want to thank you for putting that out there because everybody's like, ah, oh, it's okay. Well, no, it's not okay. It's okay <laughs> to not be okay. So I, I just, I didn't want to forget because that really of everything I read that really hit home and I think it will hit home for a lot of people. So anyway, I wanted to say that. And um, I know there's many more top things we want to cover before we go. So, um, Kim, do you want to take it over and go over some Just of the... Just real quick. I know yeah. Don mentioned that he can reiterate the warning signs, and I think that's important. I think, you know, we can talk and talk and talk about suicide, and people can gloss over it, but warning signs are what might cue somebody in to pay more attention, to go to Emma's website or do, you know, do the research they need to help uh, help their child or help themselves. So, Don, can you, can you go over that real quick for us? Uh, I'd I'd love to reiterate briefly, Um, this is according to the Jason Foundation, and, um, you know, their research indicates that four out of five and uh, they are, um, some is obvious, but also anger, increasability, lack of interest in the things I used to enjoy doing, that didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me better now? <laughs> it's okay. I just want to let the yeah. 
information is getting out there. So yeah. Oh, and we have a delay. Um, so, so but an increase uh, or decrease in app. Uh, uh, internet. Okay. Yeah. So internet. So I would say that go to, and I'm sure you've got the warning signs on your website also, and the Jason Foundation website. I encourage parents. I mean, even if you just feel like, oh, maybe they're just being hormonal teenagers. Go take a look at the warning signs because it may be more than that, right? Um, but you kind of you you didn't use the word hormonal, Emma, but I you know I read into that because <laughs> that's, that's the way I look at them. One big pile of hormones, right? <laughs> No, you, you, guys, I have a, I don't know whether this is a question or how we want to say it. I've heard this before, and I just want to know if it's something that is reality. I've heard that if, if somebody says that they're going to take their life and they're like struggling no matter what age and they're out there saying, I don't care, I'm going to do this, that they say sometimes it's better that they're saying it than if they don't say anything. Because if they're not, like you said, it's silent, they're not saying anything. So you're just thinking everything's okay, yet they're moody or they're not eating or they're quiet or like, like you know, Dawn was saying some of the signs. Um, but if somebody's out there saying, I hate my life, I want to do this, that's like a big deal. I mean, is that is that like the first time you need to say, hey, we, we need to get you to somebody? But then when you say that, a lot of times they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't care. It's it just, it's like, it's such it's such a hard topic so like if, if your son or child said to you or to their friend i can't do this anymore and they threaten yet they never somehow they seem to get through it what what would you suggest as a teenager that went through that like if you heard somebody say that well i'll say that i hear it uh practically every day um in my advocacy work um a lot of it's done on social media and teens across the nation feel very comfortable reaching out to me um, every single time somebody says something like that, it has to be taken seriously, whether they mean it or not. And a lot of times people might feel like they, um, you know, they don't have a place like, oh, that's not my business. That's a you thing. Um, no, suicide is everybody's business. If somebody is actively saying those things to you, you need to take it seriously, whether they mean it or not. Um, sometimes, you know, there is a stigma that people will say things for attention, um, that could be true, but potentially if somebody is telling you that, it's likely that they've been thinking about this for a while, and this isn't the first time, and it could be the last time that they say something, hoping for somebody to care, hoping for somebody to give them help or resources or lead them to the place that they could get that. So um, back to what you're saying, I think every single time somebody says something, even if it was not as uh, blunt as I'm thinking of taking my life is just maybe they're saying something like my life sucks or my life's never going to get better. Well, let's take some time and let's talk about it. And let's talk about how, like I say in my book, is it's not okay right now. That doesn't mean it won't ever be okay. That just means it's not okay right now. So how can we get through it? And how can we get through it together? That's the most important part. Hmm. Yeah, see, Debbie, I, I see a lot of that, too, between spouses, where one spouse goes, eh, they'll get over it. Right, then, yeah, I hear that a lot. Serious. And the reality is, when you look at the really, the, the where, where people have succeeded at suicide, um, it's often silent and quiet and behind the scenes, and, you, and people didn't take their, their, the sign seriously. And... You know, it, you're right, Debbie. It's not just a blunt. I'm going to commit suicide. Every, I I don't know what the numbers are, Emma, but how many people actually say that? Versus, you know, and then commit suicide versus just never. Those words never actually came out of their mouth. Yeah. Um. Typically, you know, especially when we're dealing with teens. Um, they're likely not going to say those exact words. It's going to look a little bit different. Um, and speaking on my my personal experience, those words never uh, came out of my mouth. And, and to an even more important part is I never researched. I never had to research how. I just knew. 
And I think that's a really important part when we're talking about teens is that they are inundated with this stuff, whether it's through the shows that they watch, the music that they listen to, the books that they read. It, it doesn't take a lot of energy for teens to think that that's an option or to know, you know, how to to attempt that. Um, and, and we want to change that. We want to get we want to get resources out there more. We want teens to recognize that that is never going to be the right option. Um, and so, you know, it's difficult. It's a difficult topic for a lot of people because it deals with emotions and humans don't want to talk about emotions, but um, we're humans. We're not robots. We all struggle. Um, and our teens are no different. Yeah. But, you know, um, since we are getting toward the end and I hate this, um, I want to thank Don number one as well. And I'm sorry that he's having technical difficulties, but you can um, go to the Jason, Jason, jasonfoundation.com to get more information as well. And I want to be sure we get that out there. And you can go to Reno Behavioral Hospital as well. And and Emma, if, you know, to go to your website or to get your book, how would we do that? I want to make sure we get that out too. Yeah, so you'll find more information on lifeisworthit.org. If you're interested in purchasing the book, which uh, is part self-help, part autobiography of my story, um, you can either find it on lifeisworthit.org. It's also available on Amazon. And if you live in Reno and you want to purchase mm -hmm. it in store, it is available at Grassroots Books and Sundance Bookstore. And um, before we run out of time, if you could say one thing to a teen out there, who's listening, what would it be? You matter. You're always going to matter. That's not going to change. And let's figure out how to move forward from this. Well, Emma, you... Tears, Debbie. <laughs> I know. I, no, I know. I, I am too. I, I, I have goosebumps. Thank but I, I really feel that I, I know, but I want... I'm speaking like right now to if you're listening to us, not just to Kim, to Emma. If you're out there, we're here for you. Like, we love you. We want you to be successful, but we know you're struggling. And it's okay to struggle, but call somebody, reach out, and go to jasonfoundation.com. Go to Reno Behavioral Center, and you can reach out to Emma. And if, if they want to reach out to you on social media, because a lot of them are on social media, what's the easiest way for social media? Yep. I talk to teens all day long. That's not even a joke. So on Instagram is the best way. Um, either life is worth it org or my personal Instagram, which is Emma M. White. Okay. Time is out, Emma. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. It's about town dev. See you next week. We love you guys. I'll be at caliber hair and makeup salon next week or shade for the break. Bye guys. Thank you.